Michael Yan at Compose Systems here in Sacramento, California. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to create a PDFX file from an InDesign file for high-end prepress and have it be very reliable. So let's start under the file menu. You can see here we're going to PDF presets. Now we have a couple different uh, options. In older RIPs in the olden days, back in CS1 and 2, we tended to suggest that you'd use PDFX 1A. Uh, that was pretty much uh, reliable for CMYK, but this does not support transparency objects, which are modern to CS3, 4, and CS5, and designers use them. It, this will cause problems, so we do not want to pick that. We want to pick PDFX 4. It may look a slightly different in CS5 or CS4, but here that is the one we want to select. So let's walk through the settings. We'll go ahead and save this, and now you can see here we've got our settings menu and dialog boxes. So, first thing that I would probably change is I would, you know, unless you're really interested in opening the PDF file, you could go ahead and turn off view after exporting. Um, I go into compression. Now here, uh, we, we, the defaults are, of course, trying to make a very nimble, small PDF file, uh, and that's fine, but it probably is not good because it's using JPEG compression, or as Alvaro likes to put it, JPEG is a, a, a compression by destruction because it does remove data. So we probably don't want to be using that, do we? So I tend to say, please do not downsample the images and do not use JPEG, use ZIP. If you say none, that will give the highest quality, but ZIP is a lossless compression and none will create, you, uh, create a situation where the files are very, very big. We don't want to do that. So let's go ahead to... Uh, do not downsample and change to zip. Again, in monochrome, if you're bringing in one bit TIFF files, we don't want to downsample them and we definitely want to leave it at CCITT group four. Compressed text and art, you can see here I'm also cropping image and data frames. This is an important setting to keep because if you have pictures in a frame and you're cropping it, all that data around outside the frame that is hidden is retained in the PDF if you do not check this, this is an important checkbox to make your file smaller and efficient. Under marks and bleed, um, again, I would check with your prepress service provider. If you are doing bleed, you want to add the marks and put them in your PDF file. And if the document has been built to bleed, there should be a bleed setting that is selected. If you uh, neglected to do that and have objects hanging off the page board, you can add uh, by typing in 125, that's an eighth of an inch, and hitting tab, that will go ahead and select it for all of those. Here in output, what we want to do is we don't want to do color conversion at this point. We want that to happen at the prepress service provider site, and we do want to tell him what we're expecting. In this case, I would select most of the time Grackle. Uh, so if you do not have this profile, please uh, contact your service provider and have him provide it for you so you can embed it in your InDesign. So advanced, a very important thing as well is the default of subsetting. Uh, this is important where I'm going to make a subset of the fonts used, rename it, and embed that font inside the PDF file. This is important that when I get the PDF file at some other location who may not own the font or maybe own a font of the same name. We don't want to substitute it. This way that prevents that from happening. This is a very reliable method. Always have this set to 100%. Security, always leave this stuff off in a pre-press environment because we do have to process, edit, paginate, impose, do things to the PDF that modify it. So we need these things turned off and that's it. You just then hit export and watch the dialog box because it's creating a reliable PDF file for exchange in a high-end printing and pre-press environment. Hope that helps and we'll see you soon.